Welcome to Sports Talk. Hello, welcome. I'm Nick from Top Match Sports, and today we're going to be going over the offensive tackle in the 2021 NFL Draft prospects. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing. We're breaking down film. I dug deep into it. Right? My rankings might not be like you see on the media because I'm not the media. I'm not influenced by the media. I'm not paid by the media. I'm not. I'm not hearing the bias from the media. I don't do that because if I did that. I'd be like the rest of them, and you'd be getting the same crap. And then we always say every year, why is this guy a bust? Why is this guy getting taken in the first round? Why is this guy a steal? Why? Because it's just a bunch of media bull crap. Every year we hear the same stuff over and over again. But I promise you my scouting is done unbiased, uninfluenced, just completely just free of all it. So let me put it this way. Okay, I feel like truly, if your team's in need of offensive tackle, this is a year to go and get your offensive tackle. With that being stated, don't feel comfortable being at 20 or 30 and thinking you're going to get something that's good because it's not going to happen that way. There's about four to five tackles, in my opinion, that are definitely worth a first-round pick in this year's draft. Now, again, we might be seeing three or four of them be taken in the top 10, possibly. It's really possible. It depends how much these teams love these guys. I mean, again, if I'm there and one of the guys falls to me and I'm a real fan of this guy because there's a few guys I like and I'm sitting there and I need an offensive tackle. Yeah, I'm taking one. Now, again, if it's cut, cut Kyle Pitts or a tackle, well, now you got to make a decision. Do I need a tackle? Do I need Pitts? Who do I want? But, I mean, there are some really good offensive tackles in this draft, and I can't wait to hop into it right away with you guys. So be sure to leave a like, subscribe. Let's hop into it right now. And, again, if anything seems a little bit – did the rankings seem off? It's because it's completely unbiased. Let's go into it right now. All right, so here we are, and as usual, we're going to hop right into this offensive tackle – uh, 2021 prospects. Again, what's better than just you and me being here together, breaking down some more players? I mean, there's nothing better. Let's be honest. Oh, uh, well, maybe there is. But, hey, long story short, let's hop right into this thing. Let's go right now. Here we go. Here's my grade scale. And as usual, nothing changes for the offensive alignment. You saw my offensive guard or interior offensive alignment. The guard and center is what I grade. I grade the same thing for the offensive tackles. Although I do look for some different things, right? Offensive tackles got to be a little bit more agile on the hips, making sure that finesse guys don't get around the edge, and then make sure that if they do a spin move to the back to the inside, if they can recover and make sure that they pick up the inside. So I still look for these things. Run block, pass block, toughness, IQ, and footwork. And again, this is a complete analysis after film study and their pro days. Here's the first guy. Yeah, not a shock. Penny Sewell. Look, 93. And, and this is the highest guy I have scouted yet. That means he's earned. And again, everyone's a little bit different. So you can't do position group compared to position group. But it is pretty amazing. He earned 93% of the possible points being able to be earned. Okay, that's pretty dang amazing. Okay, in those five categories, he got a 93 out of 100. I mean, at 93% of the possible points, which might be a little bit over 100. Here's Penny Sewell, okay? Absolute beast. Great pass blocker. Is agile to get quick guys coming off the edge. Great run blocker as he is able to seal off his defenders. Has a mean streak in him and loves to lead block on screens. Okay, this guy is a competitor. Okay, he wants to run people into the ground. This kid has it all, and he's a left tackle. He plays primarily left tackle. I didn't see him in film play any right tackle, although I did hear that he's training to be able to play both. Um, so, I mean, I think this kid has the talent to do it, but it's still hard. It's like, I mean, I, I remember Mike saying at one time, and I, I agree with this analogy, uh, and, and I played offensive line in the past, so I, I agree with what he said. It's like if you're a righty trying to write with your left hand, okay? It's something totally different. Um, just – you know, stepping with your left foot first or right foot first. Now you got to completely change it. And it's just, it's completely, it's just strange. Okay. It's strange. So that's a really good analogy. Um, Here's what Penny Sewell has. He's a great pass blocker. He's a great run blocker, right? He's, he's good at both. He's very agile. And that's something I look for. I look at his hips and see how good he is with his hips. And he's agile enough to seal off the, the, the guys in the run game, okay? And he's agile enough to hook the defenders. So, again, if they're coming around, right, and here, here's Sewell, we're blocking going forward up towards his uh, 
face here, okay? And Sewell's playing left tackle. His job is to hook the guy and keep him inside. And he's able to get around, be agile enough to hook him. And also on pass blocking, when the guy's trying to get around him on the outside here, he's able to make sure that he, he has a good enough flexibility in his hips to make sure that the guy doesn't get around him really quickly. He's a really good screen blocker. And by this, I mean... He loves to lead block on screen. Do they do a wide receiver screen or something like that? He gets out there and runs somebody over. It's pretty amazing. And he has a mean streak to him, man. I love his competitor nature, competitive nature. He, he, he's a real good player, and I feel like he's a four short tackle. But I do feel like there's a few of them. So, again, maybe you're in, like, that top five range and maybe you want to trade down two, three spots. You're going to be losing out on Penny Sewell, but there's a lot of good tackles in this draft. Again, I don't recommend trading down because there's so many uh, uh, teams that really could use a good tackle, and there's so many good ones in this draft. But this kid right here is a generational talent, and I agree with that description as he has no real true weakness. Here's his break, Daniel Morlewater, to hit pause and look at it. And again, this is the highest player I've ever graded in my life. A, 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 A plus, and A. I mean, that's pretty damn phenomenal. All right, here's the next guy, Rashawn Slater. Let me tell you something about Rashawn Slater. This guy is pretty dang talented. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm really impressed with what I saw with him. As you don't know, let me know who you guys think this is right here. You guys should know who this is. Look at him. He's not doing a terrible job, even though he's he's he, the, the, you know he's getting his neck pushed back. But again, holding his own here is Rashawn Slater. Let me know who this is if you guys know. I know who it is. A uh, little, little quiz inside this video. We'll see who's really watching through this point. But Rashawn Slater. Uh, one of the most versatile tackles in the draft. Great hips, great flexibility, great IQ. I did not really see a mean streak in him, but this kid is solid in both the run and pass game. And he can also play left and right tackle. His film shows a little bit of both. Let me tell you something. Like I said, he's versatile. He can play a little bit of both. He has great hips, okay? That means that, again, these speedy edge rushers can't really get around him because he has great hips because his hips are flexible right he has flexibility in his hips he's able to get to the outside edge to make sure these fast quick finesse edge rushers can't get around him he has really good iq right people try to do a little stunt right crosses and stuff he's able to pick it up he's a really good run blocker and a really good pass blocker and again i don't really see a lot of weaknesses in this game now i do want to show you he has an 80 as his grid which shows you that there is a pretty big gap between him and penny sewell but again i just i mean i i, I would this guy's phenomenal, okay? If, if he falls down and your team has a chance to get him and you want to tackle, go take this guy. Here's his grades. Again, run blocking. You can see it. Make sure to hit pulls, do whatever you want. But again, only question here is his toughness. Again, he doesn't really have that mean streak I like to see from some offensive lineman. Here's the next guy, Dylan Radlins. Let me tell you something about this guy. I did not really think I was going to be a huge fan of this kid. I, I really did not think so. I don't know why. But uh, I, yeah, let me. I, I'm a fan of him. I'm a huge fan of him. Uh, when I turned on the film, he was great. He was ranked lower according to the media. No, I, this kid's good. Okay, he's good. What he shows in the film, at least. Competition he plays against is not the greatest, but his film looked amazing. This guy is one of the, one heck of a tackle and can play both sides, left and right tackle. I saw in the film room. He has the agility to get to the outside finesse rushers. He is going to. Uh, Run defenders also into the ground. He is not lazy by no means, not lazy at all. He is going to find someone and hit someone. Okay, I love the toughness. And again, he can play both sides, left and right tackle. Again, more, I believe he played more left tackle in his film, but I did see a few plays at right tackle when I did watch him. So it shows that he does have a little bit of versatility. Uh, he's pretty agile too, like I mentioned. He's able to get around and seal off defenders really well. Uh, the toughness, man, he's going to find somebody and he's going to hit somebody, and, and he has heart. What do I mean by that? He's not giving up until that damn whistle blows. He's going to try to run somebody into the ground, and hey, if he if no one's by him, he's going to go find somebody and hit somebody because he loves to hit, and he's really good at getting to that second level. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of this kid. The only weakness here, and I don't even say it's really a weakness, but they say his competition wasn't the greatest. I, I Look, I, when I watched him, he played good on film, and that's all he can do. So we'll have to see how he takes the next step into the NFL. Here's his grades for Dylan. I mean, again, he looked pretty dang solid all around. Again, a little bit better of a run blocker than a pass blocker, in my opinion. But his toughness, his IQ are absolutely phenomenal, and that's what makes him a really good offensive tackle. 
Jackson Carmen. I watched this guy a long time ago, and I rewatched him, and I liked what I saw with him, okay? If he gets his hands on the defender, they're not moving. He's a brick wall. The issue is his agility for finesse blockers. This kid is a tough guy with a nasty streak. He loves the game and will run people over. Use him in the screen game as well. Again, he can be that lead blocker for you in the screen game. He likes to get out and run over some of those smaller cornerbacks. He does that very well. Look, this guy's a brick wall when he gets his hands on you, okay? If he doesn't get his hands up and on the defender, this defender's going right around him. Now, again, of course, that you're like, Nick, I, isn't that with everybody? And absolutely that's with everybody. But the issue is with him, he's not the fastest and he's not the most agile. So what I mean by this is, He's not really able to make those really flexible. He doesn't have the flexible hips to really get him out here really quickly and stop someone from really getting to that outside. So he needs to get his hands on you. Once he does, game over, he wins. If he doesn't get his hands on you, he might whiff his block. He might let a finesse guy go right around him as he doesn't have the agility or the flexibility in the hips to get to that outside. So he's a brick wall when he gets his hands on you. He's very tough. He has that nasty streak. He wants to run people into the ground. In run games, man, he can hurt somebody and push them back. I'm telling you, he does a really good job with that. And in a screen game, you get him on the outside, getting ready to hit a cornerback, he'll do it for you. I like what this guy brings to the table. And Jackson Carmen, he's also a left tackle. The weaknesses are he's not very quick. And again, that goes back to saying he, he, he's a little lads of days ago against the finesse defenders. Here's his breakdown again. Really good run blocker again. Can seal people. And again, here's this guy again. Okay, here's this guy. Let me know who this is. Pretty damn good defender if you ask me. Um, but again, going up against him. And really good run blocker. Can come around and hook a guy, okay, and, and get those outside runs going or push him, right? If he's trying to get this hole opened up, we'll just hook him this way and push him out of the play. Really tough. We'll run people into the ground. Like I said, has great IQ. But – Footwork, not the greatest. Here we go, Liam Eichenberg. This guy was very phenomenal, too. And a lot of people are saying this is a guy that's going to fall. Oh, this guy, we might be able to get him in the late first, maybe the second. This is a guy right here I am really high on, really high on. I don't see many weaknesses at all in his game. This guy is an absolute beast both in the pass and the run game. Gets the proper angles in the run game and can hurt the defender. Does not let anyone get around him in the pass game. So what does that tell you? He doesn't let anything happen. He gets to the second level as well. I like what I saw. He can play left and a little bit of right tackle from what I did see with him. Well, this guy is, is a solid, hell of a, hell of a, hell of a player right here. A uh, great run blocker, great pass blocker, gets to the second level and seals off. I can't say enough about this guy. Again, if he's there for my Raiders pick at 17, I hope we take him. Uh, maybe I, I don't know if he can play right as much. So there's a few guys that definitely play right tackle. He, I saw a few snaps. He definitely play right tackle. Uh, so he might be able to do it. I, I still might want us to go and take a right tackle. But for any team, for that matter, if your team's in need of a left tackle, take this guy. Here you go. Running pass game, both being A minuses. Yeah, he's solid. He's real solid. Doesn't have that nasty mean streak I like to see. That's why he got a B for the toughness. But he's a really smart guy who blocks great and has decent footwork. The issue is, is that I don't know if this guy's going to be running anybody into the ground. But again, does that really matter if he's really just blocking absolutely phenomenally well? James Hudson. Now, this is probably one of the first shockers. You're actually like, what the hell? Who's he? Yeah, he's a really good run blocker. Has a mean streak that I like to see. Does a really good job sealing off the defenders. Decent footwork as well. I was impressed with the film I saw. And he's a left tackle, okay? James Hudson, let me tell you something. When I saw this guy on film, he was one of the last people I scouted. And, yeah, he got one of the highest grades. I don't know how. I don't know why. I, I'll show you the grades in a second. But, I mean, he's a great run blocker. He has a mean streak. And he seals off his defenders. Again, weakness, uh, there's just nothing that bad. All these guys are pretty dang good that they don't really have a lot of weaknesses. This is a guy that doesn't do a lot great. But he also doesn't do a lot terrible, so he doesn't really have a weakness. Here you go. James Hudson, again, really good run blocker, pretty dang good pass blocker. He's tough. He has good IQ and good footwork. He doesn't get knocked over a lot, and he's pretty dang agile. I like what I saw from James Hudson. Here's Samuel Cosme, okay? 
mean streak. In the run game, he will run the defender into their ground, but he does not have the flexible hips I look for in a tackle. He seems to give up a few sacks. Good run blocker, mediocre pass blocker. And here you go again. I mean, look at him right here, right? This guy's coming off this edge. So it's his job, Cosme's job, now to really swing this back foot back, okay, and seal the edge. One thing is, if you don't have those flexible hips to really let that leg come back and then and then block him, get your hands on him, and make sure that you have those flexible hips to make sure you keep turning. Because, again, at the end of the day, see that U-shape I'm creating right here? That's what a pocket is supposed to look like. Think about a jeans pocket, right? A lot of people don't know this for some reason. The quarterback's supposed to stand right in the middle of that pocket, and they're supposed to put a nice U-shape around the quarterback. So he can be 100%. I mean, he can be sideways. He can be standing. We could be seeing this shoulder facing right at us, like looking at us in a straight line, okay? And, and that's fine. As long as if he doesn't to totally get turned around or blown through, he's fine. He can completely open up with this leg. That's 100% fine. He has a nice mean streak. He's a great run blocker. He's a nasty blocker. He has a mean streak, but he is a mediocre pass blocker, again, because he doesn't have those flexible hips I like to see in a offensive tackle. Here you go, his grades, A minus run block, B pass block, A minus toughness, B IQ, and a B plus footwork. Jalen Mayfield, okay, here we go. Good run and pass blocker. I like how he's able to seal off his offenders to open up the run game. Not the fastest or most agile player available, but in the pass game, if he gets a hand on the defender, which he does often, he is going to be do a good job blocking them. He's a right tackle. Okay, he's a right tackle, okay? He's a good run blocker, good pass blocker. He can seal off the guy. Again, here you go. If, if the guy's trying to run up this gap here, he's going to get a hold of him, push him out this way. Right now, it looks like he's he's pass blocking, right? You see how he opens up that hip a little bit, and, and this guy's trying to come around the edge. Now, he's ready for him, okay? And usually, an agility was his issue a little bit. Sometimes, he wouldn't get that leg back in time to really watch the edge guys coming around the edge. This time he does a decent job doing that, and that's what he does well here. He's a good run blocker, pass blocker, seals off. He, he lacks in a little bit of agility. Again, he can't always open up those hips all the time, can't always get up there, get to the second level, and he needs to get his hands on him. If he doesn't get his hands on, he's going to lose again because he's not fast enough to cover it inside, I mean, on the outside. And, hey, if they go on the outside and start to beat him, they can always do a spin move to get back to the inside, and they'll beat him that way too. Here you go. B plus is for both the blockings, B for the toughness, B plus for the IQ, and a B for footwork. Here's Tevin Jenkins, and this is a guy I really liked when I watched him. A little bit lower than you guys might be thinking, but again, I'll do my personal analysis at the end. Uh, here we go. Strong kid had a great bench, okay? Great bench. Uh, you didn't see his toughness on film. He likes to punish the defender. The only issue is the fast finesse defenders. He gets beat around the outside sometimes due to the swim move. Once again, if he gets his hands on you, he will punish the defender. And he's a right tackle, okay? I didn't see him play left tackle at all. Look, this guy, he got 36 reps on the bench. And again, I looked at that afterwards. That doesn't have anything to do with his film. His film shows me that this kid's a strong guy, and he likes to punish the defenders, and that he's a tough son of a gun, okay? The issue is that he loses against the finesse moves, like I said. It rarely happens, but it does, okay? And... It's the guys that come around the outside of them, right? This side of them, okay? And they hit them with a nice fast swim move or, or a spin move, whatever it may be, to get to that outside. Sometimes he's not able to get out there the fastest. So he just needs to do a better job opening up those hips and really getting and punishing this guy. If he can open up those hips and work on his agility, he will be one of the best tackles in this draft. Here you go, B plus, B plus, A minus, B and a B. Spencer Brown. Now this guy is an absolute giant. I think he's like six foot eight, six foot nine. Uh, he he's he's large. Okay, I don't have my notes right now on how big he is, but I do I do have that written down. Believe me, I I, I took notice. He's a large, large individual. Okay, uh, here we go. Um, large man who is actually pretty agile and had a good pro day. The only concern is he ends up on the ground way too much. Not because he's weak, but because he gets tripped up a lot. His pass block seems sound, but run seems pretty good. I mean, and his run seems pretty good as well. I'm sorry. I messed that up. So, yes, his pass game is good, and his run game is good as well. Not as good as his pass, in my opinion, but it's pretty decent. Look, big guy, okay? 
Typically, what happens when you're so tall, you get tripped up a little bit, and that's what happens to Spencer Brown. The thing is with him is this guy ran a four nine four at at six foot eight, six foot nine. Okay, that's pretty damn talented. He's agile, not just for his size, but he's agile. Okay, for the position group, and he's a good pass blocker. Again, he seems pretty sound on his pass blocking. The issue is he gets tripped up a lot, and that usually happens more often on the run game. Here you go, B for run, B plus. Again, you see it for the pass block. Pretty tough guy, has pretty dang good IQ. But his footwork, again, is, is where he comes into a little bit of issues as he falls way too much and he needs to work on his footwork a little bit. Here's Brendan James, okay? This this guy, I remember watching him, he just looked huge. He, he just has a big flump right here, okay? Pretty interesting guy. But, hey, you know what? He did his job pretty well. Good pass blocker, sometimes whiffs in the run game, not a really impressive bench. He's also a left tackle. Okay, look, his strengths, he's a good pass blocker. Weaknesses, bad bench, okay, that was something that was kind of concerning. And he whiffed a lot of run blocks. He, he just got lazy. Seemed like he would, like, try to get, like, get the inside right here and just completely whiff. Just like, he honestly almost, like, dropped his head down. It was really weird looking. Kind of a really weird looking guy when you watch him. I mean, look at his face right now. Weird looking guy on the run game just throws me off a little bit. Not not a great run blocker, but a pretty dang good pass blocker. You can see that here with the B plus in his pass blocking, B for his run blocking. And again, you don't really see that toughness that I like to see. Okay, I like to see B pluses. Uh, B toughness is okay, but again, doesn't run anybody into the ground. B IQ and a B footwork. Alex Leatherwood, a guy that I thought I was going to have a length ranked a lot higher, but ultimately I did not. And again, I have nothing against this guy. I just kind of scouted him over the last few days, and I didn't like what I saw. Uh, good run blocker, but he cannot get to the fast finesse pass blocker. Did not expect him to go out and help the quarterback at all either, because when he can, he takes plays off, okay? If he does not have to block no one, then he won't. He's a left tackle. Let me tell you something by this, what I mean by this. This guy reminded me of a lazy son of a gun, okay? He was very lazy, in my opinion, and it kind of frustrated me, okay? Um, I don't like lazy people. I, I don't like lazy people, okay? You block until the whistle goes, and he did not block until the whistle blew. And uh, a lot of times I saw him looking back and stuff. It just He just didn't like it. I did not like what I was seeing from him. So, again, he's a good run blocker, okay, but he takes plays off, does a little extra work, Trouble blocking fast finesse guys on the outside. And again, it's a similar issue to everyone else. Here you go. Here's his breakdown. B plus run block, B pass block, B toughness, B minus IQ, and a B minus footwork. All right, here's the next guy, Walker Little. Now, Walker Little is another really big guy, okay? He, he's like Spencer Brown in the fact that he's like six foot eight, okay? So he's a big guy, a lot of talents there, but he has a lot of weaknesses, Okay. A big guy, but he gets blown back way too much. He does not have the agility nor the flexibility to get those fast finesse blockers. Not great in the run game either. Just not tough. Left tackle, and I seen him play right tackle as well. Here's the issue about Walker Little. I'm going to be honest again. Big, tall guy, but he's weak. He gets beat by the finesse guys on the outside or gets blown backwards by a by a bull rush, okay? His strength is he's a big guy, and he has a lot of talent there in the sense that you know, if you want to work with a guy with big size, he's a guy, but he gets blown back, doesn't have the agility nor the flexibility to beat those guys that come around the edge or the run game, struggles against finesse guys, and he's not that tough. Here you go again. Here's his grades. And here's the next guy, Christian Darsaw. Now, look, this guy's supposed to be ranked one of the best offensive tackles in the draft. And when I watched his film, he was one of the first people I watched. I just did not like it. I literally said, not my favorite prospect, I will be honest. Not a great pass blocker because he doesn't not have the agility. He's not a great run blocker either. I mean, there's just literally nothing that he does that great, in my opinion. He's a left tackle, and maybe I'll be wrong about this guy. I very well could be because I'm the only one that's calling him out right now. But the only strength I said was maybe that he has a decent IQ. His weakness, in my opinion, is his agility. I mean, he doesn't have too many strengths, doesn't have too many weaknesses. But if you're talking about a great offensive tackle, I want to see a bunch of strengths. I don't see too many. So, yeah, he graded a 60 on my scale. And here you go. You see a bunch of B minuses, nothing, really only one B and nothing, no Cs or no As. You know, it's just one of those guys that are below average. Here's the last guy. And oh, my goodness gracious. I think, I, I, I don't even know why this guy, I don't know if he has to declare. I don't know what's going on, but Alaric Jackson, I'm sorry. Uh, the first thing I noticed was one of the worst run blockers I have ever seen. Like, this guy is putrid. 
And I've not, I have not been bad on Lyman yet. Like I have not called out a prospect yet, but this is bad. This is absolutely bad. He whiffs blocks, has no IQ. Dude pushes defenders into the running back. Instead of hooking the guy on the edge, he seems to push them the wrong way. Not a terrible pass blocker, but he's lazy and doesn't get beat by finesse guys. He's a left tackle. What I mean by that is this, okay? Let's say you're supposed to be running right up this hole, okay? For some reason, he doesn't understand that you got to get to the inside of this guy and pry him outward. Instead, he'll hook him and push him into the running back's hole. Okay, now let's look at it a different way. The running back's killing this side. For some reason, Jackson, this guy right here, will go for the inside and push him to the outside. I don't think he understands where the gap is he's supposed to be. It just seemed like his IQ was not there. He was doing the complete opposite where the running back was running every single time. It looked really bad. And maybe it was a running back just not knowing his job or Allard Jackson not doing his job. And I'm going to blame it on Jackson here. Because I don't think the running back was not doing his job. Mediocre pass blocker. Run blocking is his weakness. Whiffs. He whiffs way too much. He has no IQ. And he just seems lazy. Here's his breakdown. I don't even want to talk about it. All right. According to my scale, this is what you just saw. Okay. By their name, you can see what I've seen them play on film. Uh, again, Penny Sewell, I only saw him play left tackle, although I do hear that he's training also as a right tackle, but I didn't see him play there. But this is the rating, this is the ranking that you just saw according to the scale. Now we'll get into my personal analysis. Here's my personal analysis, okay? So left tackles for left tackles only. Okay, these are the guys that can play left tackle. So they can play left tackle and right tackle. I put them on this list, okay? Penny Sewell, one. Slater, two. Eichenberg, three. Raddunz, four. Carmen, four. Five, Cosme, six, Hudson, seven, James, eight, Leatherwood, nine, Little, 10, Darasol, 11, Jackson, 12. Let's get to right tackles. Right tackles, here we go. These are guys that can play the right tackle position on film. Uh, Rashawn Slater, one, Eichenberg, two, Jenkins, three, Raddunz, four, Mayfield, five, Brown, six, Little, seven. Here we go, last, well, last two. Here's my versatility rankings. These are you guys that can play both, and I did say, Penny, I had to include this guy. This is my one exception that I put on this list. Sewell's the only guy that I truly think that's so talented, and since he's saying he's training as a right tackle, I truly think that, although I didn't see him play on film, I feel like he can play both left and right tackle. So Sewell, one, Slater, two, Eichenberg, three, Raddunz, four, Carmen, five, Little, six. Now, again, I want to just point this out. Typically, you're not going to draft a guy to play two positions, okay? But it's nice to have somebody that can play both. So let's go back to these real fast. If you need a four-shore left tackle, okay, you might not want to draft a guy like uh, – I'm trying to see someone that's not on both the list here. I think Spencer Brown is one – yeah. So Spencer Brown, you're not going to want to draft Spencer Brown who doesn't play left tackle, okay? He just doesn't do it. It's not on his resume. All right, so that, that's what I want to point out here. And same thing, if you want to get a four-shore right tackle, you might want to draft someone like Tevin Jenkins rather than somebody that only plays a left tackle position like maybe a uh, – da, 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 I'm trying to think here – a Alex Leatherwood, okay? And I would do that anyway, okay? I would definitely take Jenkins over Leatherwood. Let's go to the last but not least one. Here's my final analysis. Here's just my big board. If you got to draft any kind of offensive tackle, if you tell me to rank all of them against each other, here they are. Sewell, one. Slater, two. Eichenberg, three. Jenkins, four. Raddons, five. Carmen, six. Cosme, seven. Hudson, eight. Mayfield, nine. Brown, 10. James, 11. Leatherwood, 12. Little, 13. Dursall, 14. Jackson, 15. Almost undrafted, in my opinion. All right, I'm going to go and talk to you guys a little bit. I'll be right back. See you. All right, hopefully I did a decent job explaining to you guys the offensive tackles in this year's draft. Um, I'm just telling you this, okay? You got the first 10 picks, and within the first 10 picks alone, I'm just going to read a few of the teams that could honestly be in play for one of these tackles. I mean, you got the Atlanta Falcons, Cincinnati Bengals, Miami Dolphins, Detroit Lions, the Carolina Panthers. I mean, we can keep going on, and that's just within the top 10. So when you look at my big board and you go back and you say, well, Sewell, Slater, Eichenberg, maybe Jenkins, right, Raddons, Carmen, those six alone, I mean, for the love of goodness gracious, I mean, and not all those teams are going to take tackles, but 
we can very well see four or five tackles be taken within the top 20 picks of this year's draft. You can always upgrade a tackle. I feel like this is the year to upgrade a tackle if you need a tackle. So we'll see what happens. But again, if you're sitting there and you're at like 15, 17, 20, uh, 12 maybe, and you really want a guy that you want to go get, you're either going to want to trade up or, 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 don't don't be saying a lot of people are saying oh yeah we can stay at 31 and get a good tackle oh yeah we can stay at 32 and get a good tackle oh yeah we can stay at 30 it's not real it's not real you're gonna have to move up a little bit if you want to secure one of these tackles because i can guarantee you i i will say right now and i'm not doing a mod draft yet but at least four at least four i, I would almost say at least six tackles are going to be taken in the first round I mean, I would still go with Sewell being taken, Slater being taken. I, people are saying Eichenberg might fall. I fall. I don't see it. I see Eichenberg going. I, I mean, for the love of goodness, people might be saying Leatherwood. I, I would not go with Leatherwood. I would go with Jenkins for sure. Uh, Rad Dunn's played amazing. Jackson Carmen's, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I could see at least four guys going at the very middle. I would almost raise the ante right now and say five. And I'm not. Even, we're, we're still about a week away from the draft, so we'll see what happens. But again. Position groups are coming, coming, coming. Mock drafts are going to be flying out soon. We got so much more coming for you guys soon. So we'll see you guys soon. Peace. We are built better.